Starting with question 11 and going through question 13, we have rhombuses. For question 11, it says given the following rhombus, solve for the missing angle measures. So the easiest angle we have here is finding two. One of the properties of a rhombus is that the diagonals bisect, the, or sorry, the diagonals are perpendicular. That means that all of these are 90 degree angles, so the measure of angle two has also got to be 90. Another property of rhombuses is that the diagonals bisect each of the angles. So if this is 70, it means this side has to be 70, and because opposite angles are equal in a parallelogram, which a rhombus is, it means both this and angle 3 must also be 70. Moving down, in this triangle, we know two of the three angles. Angle 2 is 90, and this angle is 70. So we can use the fact that all triangles add up to 180 to find our missing angle 1. We can call 70 plus 90 plus our missing angle equals 180. Combine like terms. Subtract off the 160, and that'll give us 20 for angle 1. And because we've used this property before, diagonals bisect angles in a rhombus. That means if angle 1 is 20, angle 4 also has to be 20. For number 12, we have in rhombus RSTV. RS is 4x minus 2. ST is 3x plus 3. Find the length of TV. And down here we have an answer blank for X and Y. In a rhombus, all four sides are congruent not just opposite sides. So I can set 4x minus 2 equal to 3x plus 3. To get up by x by itself, let's subtract 3x from both sides. And then add the 2 to the other side. And that gives us 5 for x. To find y, because all these sides are congruent, I can set my side of 2y equal to either of these. And while I'm doing it, I'm just going to plug in my value of 5 for x. That way I only have one variable. And it'll tell me the length of the other side at the same time. So I'm going to set 2y equal to 3. But instead of 3x plus 3, I'm going to use its value of 5. All right. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 3 would be 18. And because I know the value of 3x plus 3 is 18, I know that all the sides have to be 18, including the one the problem asked me to find, TV. To get y by itself, divide by 2, and get 9. So I have x, I have y, and I found TV. In 13, rhombus GHJK, diagonal HK is drawn, and the measure of angle GHK is 50. G H K. Find the following. Well, we know that diagonals bisect the angles on a rhombus, so if this is 50, this, this, and this all have to be 50. Measure of angle K H J. K H J is the 50 we just found. G H J. That's going to be the whole angle right here. Well, if each side is 50, it means the entire length or the entire angle has to be 100. And finally, find the measure of angle G. Well, angle G is our missing angle here. Because this is a triangle, the entire thing has to add up to 180. So we know that 50 plus 50 plus whatever my missing angle is, I have to equal 180. All right, combine our like terms. 180 equals 100 plus x, and then subtract our 100 off to both sides. It means our missing angle here, g, is 80. Squares. Number 14, quadrilateral ABCD is a square with diagonal DB. Which of the statements is not true? A. AB is congruent to CB. Well, AB and CB are both sides of a square. One of the properties of a square is that all sides are congruent. So this is true. AD is congruent to CB. AD and CB are also sides of the square. That's a property of squares that they're congruent. That has to be true as well. DA is perpendicular to AB. 
DA and AB are two sides of the square. One of the properties of a square is that all the angles are congruent, meaning they're all 90 degrees. That's true as well. So the only answer choice here is D. AD is congruent to DB. Number 15, which statement is false? A square is a rectangle. This is true because the definition of a rectangle is any quadrilateral with four congruent angles. All the angles of a square are congruent, so a square is a rectangle. B, a square is a quadrilateral. The definition of quadrilateral is something with four sides. This thing has four sides. It's a quadrilateral. C, a rhombus is a square. All squares have to have four congruent sides and four congruent angles. A rhombus only has to have four congruent sides. So we can't say for sure that a rhombus is a square because we don't know if all the angles are equal as well. Kites, starting with number 16. Find the measure of the numbered angles in each kite. In a kite, the angles where the two pairs of consecutive congruent sides meet are congruent. So in this case, this angle of 70 and angle 1 are going to be the same. Because that's where the different pairs of or er, consecutive congruent sides meet. Every quadrilateral has to add up to 360 degrees. So that means if we combine our 70, 70, 102, and our missing angle, and set it equal to 360, we can solve for the missing. If we combine all our like terms, 70 plus 70 plus 102 would be 142. I'm sorry, 242. And then subtract our 242 from both sides and get 118. Seventeen. We know from the last problem <coughs> that where the two pairs of consecutive congruent sides meet, the angles are congruent. So that means three and four would be congruent to two in this. However, along the other diagonal, the diagonal bisects each of the angles. That's one of the properties of a kite. So if this angle is 55, it means the other side of this one has to be 55. And the same is true for the other angle. If this is 62, that means angle 5 has to be 62. Another property of kites is that the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So that means where they meet, all of these have to be 90 degree angles. And that gets us angle 1. From here, we can find angles 2, 3, and 4 because each one of these things is in a triangle with two other angles we already know. For angle 2, we have a 90 degree and a 55 degree and all three of these have to add up to 180. Combine my like terms, subtract, so let's see, that's going to be 145 plus x equals 180. Subtract my 145 from both sides and get 35. To find angle 3, I really don't need to do anything. The measures are the same. This is 90, this is 55, so the answer for 3 is going to be exactly the same as it was for 2. Finally, to find angle 4, I have my triangle. I have one angle of 90, another of 62. And then my missing angle, and all three of those have to add up to 180. All right, so that's going to be 152 plus x is 180. Subtract from both sides. And 180 minus 152 would be 28. Number 18. The diagonals of a kite are perpendicular to each other, so I know that all four of the central angles have to be 90. I can use the same trick I used on the last one to find the measures of angle X and Y. These three have to add up to 180 because they make a triangle. X plus 39 plus 90 equals 180. Mind my like terms, x plus 129 is 180, and subtract that 129 on both sides.
I'll do the same thing for the triangle here. 54 plus 90 plus y is 180. Combine my like terms to get 144, and then subtract that 144 on both sides. And get y is 36. For questions 19 and 20, we're working with trapezoids. So on 19, find the values of all the missing angles in the following isosceles trapezoid. In an isosceles trapezoid, the two base angles are congruent. And this thing's actually been flipped sideways, so the bases are going up and down. The other part or property of a trapezoid we need is that the leg angles are supplementary. Well, here our leg angles would be this 109 and 3. So they have to make 180 degrees together. So let me set up the equation. 109 plus my missing angle equals 180. Subtract off my 109 on both sides and get 71. So this angle has to be 71. Because 3 is a base angle with 2, that means 2 also has to be 71. And 1 and 109 are also base angles, so this has to be 109, as base angles are congruent. For number 20, in isosceles trapezoid, PQRS, the measure of angle P is 105. Measure of angle Q is 75. Measure of angle R is 75. First question, find the measure of angle S. All right, well, angle S has to be 105. P and S are base angles, so they have to be congruent to each other, the same as Q and R. If PQ is 2X, QR is 3X plus 2, RS is 16, and SP equals 2X plus 1, what is the value of X and the length of each side of the quadrilateral? I can find X by setting it equal to the other side. In an isosceles trapezoid, the two legs are congruent. So that means that 2x must equal 16. To get x by itself, divide by 2 on both sides, and that's going to give me 8. For the value of pq, I can plug this 8 back into the 2x. 2 times 8 would be 16, which is good because it should be congruent to the other side, which is also 16. For qr, Plug in my value of x, that would be 3 times 8 plus 2, 24 plus 2 would be 26. Rs, we already know is 16, it was given, and the last one, sp, would be 2 times 3 plus 1, or 7. For 21 through 36, we have to determine the most precise name for each quadrilateral. On 21, we see that opposite sides are congruent. These, that's a property of a parallelogram. We don't have enough information to say that it's anything else because all we know is that those are congruent. On 22, we have opposite sides are parallel. That automatically makes it a parallelogram. And in the middle, we can see that the diagonals have been bisected because each half is congruent to the other side. That's also a property of a parallelogram, so it doesn't give us enough information to say that it's something more precise. So this is a parallelogram. 23. We have consecutive congruent sides and two pairs of them. That is the definition of a kite. 24. Here we have opposite sides that are parallel and congruent. That's enough to show that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. However, because there's a 90 degree angle in this corner, and we know that these two together have to make 180, that means that this would also have to be 90. And because opposite sides are, or, or sorry, opposite angles are congruent, this would also have to be 90 since we already know it's a parallelogram, and this would have to be 90, which makes this a rectangle. For 25, we have four congruent sides, four congruent angles. That is a square. 26, we have opposite sides that are parallel and no information. 
opposite sides parallel is enough to show that it's a parallelogram, but nothing else. For 27, we have four congruent sides. The definition of rhombus is four congruent sides, and we have no other information to tell if it's something more precise than a rhombus. Twenty-eight. Here the diagonals have been bisected. We can tell because each side of this is congruent to the other side. Diagonals being bisected is a property of a parallelogram. So this has to be a parallelogram. Twenty-nine. Here, the diagonals are perpendicular to each other and opposite angles have been bisected. Both of those are properties of a rhombus. 30. We have four congruent angles. That's the definition of rectangle. We don't know anything about the sides, so we can't say if it's anything more precise than a rectangle. 31. We have one pair of parallel sides. That's enough to call it a trapezoid. However, there are also two congruent legs, which makes it an isosceles trapezoid. 32. Here we have opposite sides parallel. One pair, which makes it a trapezoid. In order to be isosceles, the two legs would have to be congruent, but that's not the case here. 33. A quadrilateral with all four sides congruent. That is the definition of rhombus. 34. A parallelogram whose diagonals are perpendicular. Perpendicular diagonals are another property of a rhombus, and the fact that it's a parallelogram means that it has to be a rhombus and not a kite. 35. A parallelogram with congruent diagonals. Congruent diagonals is a property of a rectangle, and because it's also a parallelogram, we know that it has to be a rectangle and not any other shape. 36. A parallelogram with congruent angles. Well, four congruent angles is the definition of rectangle. This has to be a rectangle. <coughs>